Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, Western Civilization's only defense against Last Christmas by Wham. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the big show today. We're going to be going ahead and talking about our top 10 games of this year, 2019. With me is Han, and we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss some of our favorite games of the year. Before we get started, just let me say, um, for my list, uh, one of the things I decided to do is uh, I, I, I am not going to do reprints or games that are in a, uh, like a series or family of games. There's so many good games this year, I, I just, in order to make that clear, I just decided, I don't know what Han's doing, but just for me. Um, so there are a few games that I just want to mention that fall into that category that were really good, but will not be on the list. Zombicide Invader from Simon was a lot of fun, another great Zombicide uh, entry. <clears throat> Commands and Colors Medieval from GMT Games, again, a lot of fun. Uh, Red Alert, which is from PSC, which is another Commands and Colors games in outer space. Um, the DC deck building game Rebirth, which is kind of that, that legacy version of the DC deck builder, was pretty good. And uh, Legendary James Bond, which we played a couple of weeks ago and which was just on the, uh, I just did the review for uh, here recently. That was really good. And then Relic from WizKids. The reprint of Relic from WizKids was really good. Those are all really good games, but they will not be appearing on this list. Um, all right, so let me ask you, first of all, do you have any honorable mentions you'd like to discuss before the actual list itself? Or... No, uh, okay. Just, just most of those uh, games that you mentioned, because I, I also try to exclude expansions, um, with the sole exception of my villainous one. But. Okay, all right. So uh, let me just—I just want to mention then my honorable mentions really quick, and we'll get into our list. Um, these, all these, were very close. Um, uh, Judge Dread, Helter Skelter from Osprey, I really liked. I got a kick out of that one. Played a game called Wacky Races from Simon, which was a uh, kind of a, a racing tile game, which was actually. Pretty fun, aimed at a younger audience, but it was a pretty cool game. Um, Dizzle from Stronghold Games, which is kind of this crossword puzzle game where you, you're exiting. It's, it's an abstract game, but it's like crossword puzzles where you're exiting out parts of a crossword puzzle, and you can set up bombs that blow up on other people's things. It's, it, was, it was pretty fun for as, as light and as abstract as it was, which is abstract's not usually my cup of tea. And then this one is actually one that just barely made it on the list, and this is Tiny Towns from AEG. Did you play that one, mm -hmm. Tiny Towns? It's pretty fun. It's kind of a... Uh, you almost kind of you're Tetrising okay. pieces on a board, and you're trying to make your most efficient um, thing. But Tiny Towns is really a lot of fun. All right, so we're going to go ahead and now jump into our top ten. So why don't you go ahead and start with your number ten? My number ten is <coughs> Horrified by Ravensburger. Horrified, very good game. What would you like about Horrified? Uh, I liked how there was different, not scenarios, but like different monsters that you could use mm -hmm. that would change it up. You can kind of set your difficulty. Um, and then also I thought each of the different characters had different uh, powers that made them unique enough to be able to be like, oh, I want to play as this. But it was yeah. also simple enough that new people to even the gaming genre could be able to hop in and be like, oh, okay, and I kind of understand what's going yeah, on. Yeah, because we played like with Madison and Emily who are not, they don't have a lot of gaming experience and they, 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 I mean, that's like their favorite game of the year. They both really took to, took to that one quite a bit. Yeah. It is, it's a fun game. Mm -hmm. It's like you say, with the different, with the different monsters, there's, there's different objectives and different things you can do. It's such a simple game mm -hmm. and it's such a light game, but at the same time, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So that's, that's a great game as well. All right, so uh, my number 10 was one we played a couple of times, OP Arena. Yeah. <laughs> OP Arena is a lot of fun. It's a, it's a dice rolling game where you, um, have just these different crazy, crazy cards, and you um, they give you a certain dice abilities that you can do when you roll dice. So you roll a dice, and then you figure which card you want to put the dice on, which ability do you want to put the dice on. There's some kind of passive abilities that trigger. Um, it's really a lot of fun. Just really, as, as stupid and crazy as it is, it, it surprised me how much I liked it. I wasn't expecting to like it really at all, and I really had fun with it. You like that one? Yeah, the mechanics I really liked about that. Like you said, the because it has a lot of pop culture references, and it, so it seems very so on the surface. It seems very vain, or you know, it doesn't seem like it's got much depth to it. But that cars are actually really pretty solidly made, so it's it, it's a good concept. Yeah, um, I just don't know how often I could play that over and over. No, again. no, it's not. It's it's not one you're going to be playing every day. But I mean, it's it's a it's a good it's a good light game. It's a good filler game. Mm -hmm. It's 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 one you know I can pull out just just every now and then out of the blue, and it's quick. You know, relatively. I mean, you can play because I think the original game says like it's like to thirty points. You mm -hmm. play it longer, like sixty or something like that, and. We played the first game, it was over like that. We're like, no, no, no. So I don't think I'll ever play it with a shorter game again. I think I'll always play it with a longer game because it's not that long. But I really like that one. So that one's from WizKids. I'll do my nine, and then we'll let you do your next two. So I'm going to do for my number nine was Jaws from Ravensburger, 
We played Jaws, great hidden movement game uh, in two acts. The first act, uh, one person's a shark, the other people are the, um, you know, Brody and, and, and the other characters, and Quentin, etc. And you are trying to kill swimmers around the beach. And then in the second act, depending on how well you do in the first act, the shark gets more abilities, and he's attacking the boat that the characters are on. And it's it's I really like that how the 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 first act sets the stage for the second act. I thought that was good. And you like that one too, right? Yeah, that one's actually my number eight. So oh, okay. I'll all right, talk all about right. That then. So spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, great game. Mm-hmm. Great game. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, go ahead. And your eight then is Jaws. Uh, yeah. So my eight, oh, my nine is Crusader right. Kings. It's by Fria Liga or yeah. Free League. Free League. Um, and so I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, because that com- I play the computer game and it's super complex and you're just like, ugh. But this one was actually fun because you got to interact with other people. It kind of simplified it down, but I like the multi-action cards that you can choose and be like, all right, I'm going to do this card, but then I can kind of do two things with this card. Yeah. And then also whatever I do interacts with my player next to me. And so I thought that was a cool <coughs> way to interact with people. And there was conflict, but you didn't have to like always be in conflict. And so there was multiple... Like, you could do multiple different things and not always feel like, oh, I had to always fight my neighbor. Right, kind of right, right. So I thought that was a pretty cool um, system where you can interact with people, you can get, a, get errors, and so, like, sometimes you want to kill your person off because right. you're like, oh, then I can get rid of this trait or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And stuff like that. So I thought that was, um, I like the trait bag. That was, I think, my favorite part of that game. It, it was. A, it's an interesting new kind of twist on the skill check mm-hmm. as opposed to just rolling dice. Right. I agree, I agree. Okay, so that was your number nine. What is your number eight? Number eight was Jaws by Ravensburger. Um, I liked it. Uh, I played as the uh, humans, not the Jaws. And so I thought it was fun and quick. I think that mm-hmm. was the best part of it because you got that tension. Because if it went on too long, I feel like that tension would go have dissipated, right? Yeah. But with that tension, like you said, your first act, you're like, oh, trying to find that shark and do it the best you can. And it's a pretty good cooperative game, too, because like I felt like each person... It wasn't like me telling the other person to do this and this. Like you were thinking, and then each person has their own special abilities yeah. that made it different enough to be like cooperative oh. within the team. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes you feel like you're actually unique in that team and be able to do specific things. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it's it's uh, just a just a fun package, and like you say, it's quick. Yeah, and it's and it uh, um, for me for me, like I say, what 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 sells it is that idea of. Um, we got the two acts, and and the, the second act builds on the first act, and and how you do in the first one determines the second act. I'd like to see more games do that, mm-hmm. have have multiple acts, and how you do in one. And and but it has to be quick. That's the key. If it goes on too long, you might as well be playing like just a big campaign, right? And that's not what I'm talking. I'm just talking about because it almost feels like a campaign, but within the self-contained little thing, you know. My number eight is civil, Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea. Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea is. Um, uh, was a game we played, and, and what I liked about uh, Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Seas. Now it's a long game. I mean, it's a long game, so you're probably going to be playing. I mean, we, we started thinking we we're going to play the whole the whole grand thing, and we ended up playing like the first scenario, you know, within the first eras. And they say you can go ahead and just do do era things, you, you play play through eras, just because it is so long. But I loved it just because it's so mean, and it's so different from conventional civilization building games where it's it's you're 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 building this this the strategy, you're building your engine, you're building everything up, and and this game kind of undercuts all that. It's just like no, this this game is really it looks like it's going to be one of those games, big civilization building game, but it's really just to take that game. I mean, it's really just I'm going to screw you over, I'm going to screw you over, and when you realize that, and you realize that's where the fun comes from. You really appreciate it, and I think I, I know a lot of people were disappointed in it because they went into it thinking this is going to be one of the great civilization builders, and but it's so different than that, and I and I really liked it because in that in, in those rounds where you're playing the cards, I mean constantly, constantly we were laughing our butts off. We were constantly laughing at just how mean this game was, and and that's why I got a kick out of it. Mm-hmm. Did you like that one? Yeah, it was funny because I think that startled my rivalry with your friend. Um, what's his name? Ken. Yeah, Ken. Yeah. yeah. And so like now every time we sit next to each other, we're like, all right, we're gonna fight now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it, we, we, we were playing? Was it Dune? You were next to each other. Yeah, you we were, we're gonna, playing Dune. But you didn't uh, end up. We didn't end up fighting. So that was it. Was it was a nice change of pace. But yeah, that one is like once I realized I was like, man, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to attack you. He's like, it's part of the game. And I was like, once I, you, like you said, once right. you realize that, you're like, oh, okay, it's okay, because you're gonna do the same thing back to me. So. Exactly. Yeah, you just know how the game goes. So anyway, that, that was my number eight. Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea from GMT. My number seven is Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings is a. Um, 
just like what Han was saying, it's a fun game, and, and what, what's really cool about it is how you're playing those cards. And for me, I mean, I like that too, because you can do the multiple things with the cards, but for me, what I loved about it and what I loved about the card play was that you never know, like, I can play this card, but then it's going to benefit the next guy, right? Or I can play this card, and it's going to screw me. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you can have benefits that come to you from those cards, but... You have to think on multiple levels when you're playing those cards. You have to think of, okay, what is this card going to do for me now versus what, what is it going to do for other players? And, 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 and the, essentially, because every card you play is an action card, but it's also an event card. And those events really can profoundly affect the game in, in ways. Like, what was, we're, we're playing that, that one game we played, I think it's the second game we played, and, and Drew did not have any errors or anything like that. And, I, and I'm like the guy that's going to trigger whether he gets errors. So I'm like, like deliberately playing cards saying, well, I want to do this, but I don't want him to have an error, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that. And, and, it's, and it's a whole lot of fun. And, and I, you know, I like a Dudes on a Map in Europe game anyway. And it, it's just... Um, and it's one of those games that's really intimidating. First time we played with Matthias, first time he got it out, we're kind of like, oh, this one looks like a bear. And once you figure it out, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. There's a lot going on, but it's like... Okay, but we just do this step and this step and this step, and it's not hard. I think some of the rules do need a bit of streamlining. Mm -hmm. um, it seems there are a few little wonky things there and clarifications. The rule book could have been better organized, but generally, I really liked uh, Crusader Kings. I thought it was a lot. It was a lot more fun than I was expecting to have with it. So, all right, that was my number seven. Now uh, let's do your number seven. Uh, so my number seven was Ecos, uh, ah, the last, the the first continent, the first continent by AEG. Um, I liked. I really liked that. Just drawing out of that um, bag. Bingo! Like, it's bingo. Yeah, it's yeah. bingo. <clears throat> and like, it also determines the length of your turn because if you got, I think, two wild ones, it ended your turn or something like that. <coughs> um, and so it was cool because you were like, there was like that was a cool mechanic. But then also just like building the world and like you're trying to put things down, like mountains and trees, in order to get yourself some points. But then at the same time, you're also trying to like put these animals out there, and so I could decide to eat all of these animals that you just put out there. Yeah, and, like it helps both of us because you were like, "Oh, I got to put these points out," but then I got points because of what yeah. you were doing. So it was a it was a fun little mechanic, and I think <clears throat> relatively simple, but it's still fun. Yeah. Agreed. It, it's a simple game, and it's a, but but I, I like it for the same reasons you did. I like the bingo aspect of it, and this is another game. And I said this in my review. I was not looking forward to it. I didn't think it looked like that much fun. I was just thinking the theme didn't throw me. Like, you know, whatever, I read the rule book, I'm like, it's like, bingo? Okay. But then you actually play it, and it's like, oh my gosh, you get invested in it, because it's bingo, and you're invested in it. But then, the idea how you manipulate the, 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 the land, the continent, and how you're all doing that to your own benefit is, is so good. And it's got just these simple little, you know, you're rotating your card things, it's just a simple little mechanics, and it's, but man, it's fun. I really liked Echo. That, that's really a surprising, one of the, one of the, like, pleasant surprises I've had in a long time in gaming, is how much I loved that game and was not expecting to, so. Yeah. Alright, that was your uh, seven? seven? Yeah. What's your, uh, go ahead and do your six. My six was Flotilla by WizKids. We just, <laughs> we just played this, and I, I really enjoyed it. I know everyone else at the table pretty much hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it because it's a nice, puzzly Euro game, and I re like Euro games because they don't really have conflict, but they can still have good interaction. Mm -hmm. And so this game had good interaction with the marketplace because you had... You could either be float side or sky side, and depending on which side you were, you were either giving resources to the market or taking it. Yeah. And so I thought that was a pretty fun interaction. And so it also just let you have multiple paths to victory. Because yeah. like the game said, you could win without having to ever go to the sky side, or you could go to the sky side immediately and just play that game right. as well. So I thought that was, it was a fun game. Um, the board um, was, I think for our first time, it was taking a little bit longer than it should have. Um, but I think once, if you get down and play it with people that know it, I think it'll go a little bit quicker. Yeah, I, and, and again, I said this, you know, I'm not a big Euro guy, but I can appreciate what it was doing. I like the, I like the sink side and sky side. I like how you could just flip those at any time. It, it changed the dynamics of the game and how you're playing, and I, and I like that quite a bit. And I also, you know, I like the market, I like how, how that worked. I think... I, my problem with it, and, and, and it's kind of true of a lot of Euros, not all of them, but I think Emily hit the nail on the head when she said, there was no, ah, I got your moment, you know? And there was a, maybe a little bit of that with the with the market fluctuating, because I know, I know one time you were trying to buy something, and I, like, bought up a bunch, and it drove the price up, and mm -hmm. I remember that that happened. So there was a little bit of that, but, you know, as opposed to, to, to some other games where there was those real tense moments, I, I felt this one didn't have it. And then, on top of that, we were playing the full five-player count, and it was long. It was long. We were, I mean, 
it was what three to uh, the box says it's like a ninety to one hundred and fifty minutes, right? And and I mean we were three hours into it and maybe halfway. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, I I was I, I I could appreciate it and I think heavy Euro gamers would like it, but it was not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. So all right, so that was your number six. Six, okay. And then is it back to me then? Yep. All right, so. My number six is a game we played uh, a while back, and again, this is another one that I was thinking, eh, I mean, I, I didn't think I'd dislike it, but I was like, uh, it didn't really excite me, and then I played it, and I actually had a lot more fun with it than I was expecting to, and this is Extraordinary Adventures Pirates from, oh, yeah. from uh, Forbidden Games. Oh, sorry. Forbidden Games. Um, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates is a racing game where you've got these three different tracks, three or four different tracks, I can't remember, three, is it Three. And you've each got ships on each of the tracks. And essentially, it's the first one to get to the end um, is going to trigger the end of the game, but not necessarily win it. Because as you're moving along, you have to divert your ships off of the um, path, off the tracks, in order to get kind of goods that you can then later take to other places and sell. So it's kind of a pick-up and deliver aspect of it. But at the same time, you get so many... You're playing cards, you play so many cards, and you can use those cards for points, or you can use those cards for abilities. And then you can also pick up other cards. So there's kind of a deck-building mechanic in here that works really well um, as, as well. Uh, I really just, it was, it, again, this is kind of a lighter game, but it was just, man, it was just fun, and it was intense. And as you're getting down to the end there, it's like, okay, how can I catch up? And there's, again, so many ways to get points that you're not quite sure what everybody else is getting. You just know the closer you are to the end, the more points you're going to get on that track. But then there's the treasures you can pick up. There's the, the, the goods you can you have. and I, I really got a kick out of it quite a bit. I thought it was a lot of fun. What, what did you think of that one? Yeah, uh, like you said, it was fun. Um, I really liked the deck building aspect of it. Because um, you, you could either cull your deck and try to get it as small as possible to always get good cards. Or you could just have a bunch of them and have lots of opportunities. Because you could either try to move all of your ships at the same time. Or you could only focus on one and let the other ones kind of go to the wayside. So it was... It didn't feel like you had a set path to victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, again, one I was not expecting to like as much as I did, and really enjoyed it. So that's Extraordinary Adventures Pirates from Forbidden Games. My number six. Uh, my number five is one we've already discussed, Horrified from Ravensburger. Uh, again, I won't need to go over it too much, but again, it was just a very simple game, but it had a lot of... Well, first of all, I love the theme, too. The Marvel Monsters was a great theme. Um, it's a game that experienced gamers, uh, I think, will enjoy. I mean, because there's there's enough nuance with the different monsters and the different things you have to make them do. And it, almost kind of that, what I like to say, the pandemic effect, where it's like, okay, we got to get on top of this, we got to get on top of this, we got to get on top of this. Um, but at the same time, like I say, Madison and Emily, who are new to gaming, they really enjoyed it. They they really had a lot of fun with it as well. So I think it's it's one of those that kind of, I, I think it's a good gateway game, but it's there's still enough there that, that experienced gamers are going to get kicked out of it. So. That was uh, number five from Ravensburger. All right, so what is your number five? Uh, so number five is Villainous, Evil Comes Prepared. So that one's the one that had Scar, Yzma, and Radigan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and so I hadn't played Villainous before this year. So I know Villainous, the base game, is 2018. Right. But this one came out in 2019. And I like how uh, the, those expansion packs, you can play them by yourself, like just mm-hmm. from that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. I thought that was uh, <clears throat> neat enough to warrant it being able to just be on my list by itself. Okay. okay. So, but um, I liked it because um, that game, you can have these different characters and they have pretty different um, win styles, but then it's not so different so that as a new player, just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, right. Kind of right. thing. So it's, it's cool. And it's like, you have those moments where you're like going against the other people by giving them like enemies that they have to deal with. But some of the characters, they benefit from that. So it's like, you want a decent amount of player count so that way you can have those enemies because sometimes you need them. Right, right. But you don't want too many because you get AP. Yeah, well, yeah, because well, we, the first time we played Villainous, there were six of us. And, yeah, and the problem was the people on one side of the, the, the table don't know what the people on the other side exactly. of the table are doing. And this is really a game where you have to pay attention to what, what other people are doing, right? Mm-hmm. And, and kind of, I think Ken said it, it's kind of an under-the-radar game where you're just trying to get your stuff done under the radar, you know, so, but I haven't, I actually haven't played with any of the characters in that specific expansion, so I can't comment on that, but I love the game, mm-hmm. I think it's a fun, super fun game. All right, that was your number five, five? Mm-hmm. okay, and then your, uh, four, four. It is my, my number four is Tainted Grail by Awakened Games, okay, um, so this is a Kickstarter game that recently got released, um, and so it's a lot of fun because you have your character board, 
And so there's like three different archetypes that you can pick. And so you can pick a specific character and then you can pick an archetype. And so you have these decks that you're like fighting decks, you have diplomacy decks. And so it's kind of a part choose your own adventure, kind of part like building up your character. But it's like a brutal world, and so like you're gonna go insane. You're gonna get like <laughs> fighting enemies, and you're gonna hit, get your HP down. And if your HP's down, then that means you have less energy to do stuff the uh, next day. So it has a lot of just a lot of fun elements, and it's a good cooperative game. Right. Um, and so <clears throat> it's a fun story game. I the problem I would foresee with it is that once you complete the stories, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of stories. Is I don't know how often you can come back and just play so it. So you don't know replayability, right? Yeah. Is so. there is there with with the stories? I mean, is that is that a one off or is it a campaign or is it? A- so it's kind of like a campaign. I mean, <clears throat> they say you can just sit down and play it, but it builds off of it because then you'll be like, all right, my next mission, the next time we play, is this. And so it has a lot of things of like you'll save your stats and stuff like that. Right. And so it definitely seems like a, a campaign game. So that's my problem. I think my one critique of it and why it's not higher is that I just don't know how you can just be able to sit down and just play it. Mm-hmm. Now, does that is that uh, did Sam do the Kickstarter on that? Is that what yeah? That was he about? also did that on. Um, so <coughs> he, he got because they have a weird thing where they do two wave shipping where they just sent the base game out this year. Yeah, and then the base game with all of the Kickstarter exclusives is releasing next year. Oh, okay. okay. So um, all right. that's what I did. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't played that one, so that's that's. I know Sam was talking about it. It sounds mm-hmm. sounds like a pretty interesting. Yeah, it's game. a it's a good game, and I really enjoy it. But that, like I said, it's um, it's very story driven. So if you right. want to just sit down and just play a game, that's probably not what you're. Yeah, yeah. Gonna go for. That was that was kind of my problem. And it's one of the reasons why the um, the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys to Middle Earth isn't on the list is because it it doesn't have just kind of one off games. Mm-hmm. You got to play the whole campaign. It's like you know. I don't really have time to play, and, and when I'm trying to get, if I want to get a game to get new players to play with me, well then do I have to start back at one, and then we're only going to play one, or maybe two, and so I, it needed, it needed to be a little more like Mansions of Madness, where you mm-hmm. just play a scenario, but anyway, but okay, so that was your number four? Yep. Okay, so now it's my number four? Mm-hmm. Uh, my, this is one we've already talked about again. Uh, this is uh, Ecos, Echoes the First Continent. I uh, really loved it, for the, again, the reasons we said. It's a great... Um, the bingo thing is great, and then the uh, the interaction with the continent is a lot of fun, too. I don't think we need to say anything more about it, except it's a fantastic game. Check it out. AEG. My number three is a game I actually did a Kickstarter on, um, which I rarely do Kickstarters, but this is one I just really wanted, because based on the strength of a previous game and the IP, and this is Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Um, I don't think you've played that one, have you? It It's freaking awesome. Did you ever play the Conan game? No, We're, but so it's based on the the Conan game, um, of course, with the Batman IP. But it's such a good game b- because you've got the individual cards and um, individual player cards, and they've got the little like jewels on it that are like you know energy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so every time you move or do anything, you're spending energy, right? Every time you attack, you're spending energy, and then you only get so much. And then you, like you can choose to rest and get a bunch back, you know. But then you effectively lose a turn, you know. But then you've got, so that's what all the kind of heroes are doing. And then you've got the bad guy who has the river. And he's just sending all these waves of bad guys at you. And he is, the way they do it is very cool because it's like I can I can do my number one, which is really cheap, and then it goes back to the end. But if I want to activate that guy again, it's going to cost me a lot of, of my power. So it's this really cool system that the, that the villain has. And it's it's very similar to Conan, but it's a better IP. And I almost I want to say it's kind of more streamlined than the Conan, and in some ways it is. But the problem is the rulebook sucks. <laughs> this is one of the again one of the absolute worst rule books out there. But if you can get past the rule book, it's a fun game. It's so stupid because it's like every scenario you want to see who gets initiative, and it took us forever to find out who, well who gets initiative because it's not saying it's not saying it's not saying. Finally, like in some little corner of the rule book, I find this thing saying if the if the if the timer is you know blue then batman has initiative if it's a slightly different shade of blue than the other and it was just like what you know and it's just so i mean just crap like that is and there's a lot of crap like that but if you get past it it's a super fun game and you know the the kickstarter um came with just a mountain of crap and it's one i want to play a game maybe we should hit that at some point because it's a super fun game i actually wanted that's one i always kind of wanted to do a playthrough of mm-hmm. uh, maybe we'll do that at some point but 
Anyway, Batman Gotham City Chronicles, a heck of a lot of fun. That's from Monolith, and that's uh, my number three. So now, your number three? So my number three is Outer Rim, um, <coughs> Star Wars Outer Rim uh, by Fantasy Flight Games. I really like it. Um, I played it a bunch solo. I played it with other people, and other people that I've played with have enjoyed it, um, even my fiance. Um, and so she... Does she usually not like those kinds of games? No. Well, she does, but she uh, she doesn't like super heavy conflict games. So, okay. like, she liked how she was able to just do stuff by herself. And, like, we were interacting with each other through, like, the market and stuff like that. Um, and so I like the variability of the board because it says you can set it up like this. But then, like, if you want some variability, you can, like, change it around. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I just thought it was a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to more expansions, yeah. more just for, like, the content of the store. Yeah. But the story, the story book or whatever where they had, like, pull out this card and, like, yeah. this happens to you. I really like that. Um, so it's good IP. Like, you know, I've, I love the smugglers, bounty hunters, and... All that sort of stuff. So it was fun being able to, like, oh, I want to sell this stuff, or <coughs> I'm going to go hunting for a bounty today. And sell it. Yeah, it's it's um, it, it's it's a great game. I really like I really liked Star Wars um, Outer Rim as well. Uh, I played it several times now, and I and and it's kind of to the point now where I I think. I mean, I'll still play it. I'll still enjoy it, but I really need that extra content. Mm-hmm. I really need more. I really need more of the database cards. I really need more of the counter cards and marketplace cards. Um, but every time I played that, it's 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 been an adventure, mm-hmm. and it's just you know it's it's a Star Wars IP, and it's fun original Star Wars, not crap current Star Wars. But it's it's I I just I really enjoy the, the show quite uh, the game quite a bit, and um, I, I just chomp into the bit for that extra content. Yeah. So, yeah. But it, but it's a great game. Um, Okay, that was your number three? three yeah. And your number two? My number two is McKee by uh, Cyclone Games. I actually have the game here in my backpack because it's so small. And it's a great single-player game. And so the board is about, like, you fold it out and it's, like, that much. So it's, uh-huh. like, a super small game. And Oh, is that French Resistance? Yeah, it's about the oh, French okay. Resistance in World War II. And so you're setting it out and, like, you're, the enemy has a deck of patrol cards and so, like, you'll be, like, setting it out. And so part of the game is just knowing what, how, where the enemy is likely going to be. So that way you're not on there when they come out because if all the spots are filled, then they're going to start arresting your people. And, oh, but yeah. at the same time, you want to put them out because in a strategic position because if they can't get home, they're also going to get arrested and they're permanently gone. And so it's a fun game of, like, pushing your luck and being like, ooh, I think they're either going to go here or here, but I really need this spot. So I'm gonna... And so it's a fun, like, tension build, and it's super quick, too. So it's like, I, I brought it to work one day during, like, office hours, and I just sat there and played it in, like, 20 minutes. Is it a solo game? Or... Yeah, it's a completely oh, okay. solo game. Okay. And it's, um, it's fun. There's the, they have different missions that you can do. So, like, there's, like, ten missions, I want to say, and you pick two. And that's what you're trying to do with that, that game. Lost it, but, but it sounds it sounds like uh, yeah, it's really pretty good. Cool. It's a pr- it was originally a print and play. Uh, oh, and okay. so then it was released this year in like cardboard and, you know, right. token right. form in 2019. Um, and so I got it because I love solo games, and it's the fact that it's solo only means that it's a really good mechanics. So. That's that's very cool. I hadn't even heard of that one. That one wasn't even on my radar. That that sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that was your number two. Two. Okay, so my number two. Was Star Wars Outer Rim? Okay, so Star Wars Outer Rim again. Uh, we discussed it, but I I really enjoyed um, I, I, I the things I enjoy about this game is it's open world. It's a sandbox game. You can do what you want. You can um, you know you can and what I do like is there are those aha moments. Like I remember in I think it was uh, I think we we played together once or mm-hmm. twice. Yeah. And I remember one of the games we were playing. Uh, I I bought I can't remember what ship it was, and you were like so pissed because you wanted to buy that ship. And I mean, so there's like, ah, you, ah, you know, um, but it's it's fun, and um, the the pretty much most of the mechanics work great. I think the the way the patrols work is still a little wonky. It's mm-hmm. still it feels like that could be better, and if it, it almost feels like in a in a uh, an expansion, they could streamline that or make that a little more relevant. Especially when you when you're playing with four players, four it becomes. Three or four players makes that a little more interesting. But like when you're playing solo or playing with two players, it's like so easy to avoid the patrols. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, so hopefully that'll get addressed in, in expansions. But again, I really want to see more content for this game, but I, I loved it. I, you feel, again, like you're Han Solo or Boba Fett or, or these characters, and I, and I really enjoyed it quite a bit. So that's uh, Star Wars Outer Rim from Fantasy Flight Games. That's my number two. All right, so I'll do my number one. 
and then I'll let you have the last word, okay? okay? So my number one is... Uh, Undaunted Normandy from Osprey Games. Undaunted Normandy from Osprey Games is hands down my favorite game of the year. This is a game that um, I'd heard people go on and on about. I'm like, I really want to try that game. And then the good people at Osprey sent me a copy to review, and I fell in love with it. And I actually ended up buying a copy for a buddy of mine for his birthday, like right after that, because I knew he'd love it. But it's so much fun um, because it's a deck builder. It's it, you know, this is a game that, and I actually had somebody today leave a comment on that on that on the. Norm, uh, Undaunted Normandy video that said, you know, so many, a lot of games put out kind of a deck building mechanic and it, and it almost feels grafted on. It almost feels like it's, it's, they just put it there to, to have that mechanic in it. And here it just works so well. It works so well because it's, the, the cards themselves are your squad members. And when they're shot, you lose a squad member and they're a casualty. And it's like, ah, you know, and, but the, I like it because not only do you get that that deck building, it does a scratch the deck building inch. It scratches the kind of that tactical uh, World War II, uh, you know, war gaming itch, and I like that too. And I know for me, and and I've had other friends say this, the hardest thing in playing this game is getting used to the fact that there are no line of sight rules. It's pretty much you just hit anything on the board. And it's like what? No, no, no. What about obstructions and stuff? But it but it works. It's so good with the natural defenses add to the units defenses and distance. It works so well. It it's just so good. It's a dice chucker, but it's a deck builder, and it's a tactical maneuvering game, and it's so much fun. And you enjoyed this one too, mm-hmm. didn't you? Yeah, this is actually my number one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's why I had no problem giving him the last word, right? Yeah, it um, is. It's, it's good. so good. Um, I like it because it's like if you took Normandy forty four, like that Memoir forty four. Yeah, Memoir forty four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. And you took that and distilled it down, and you're like, all right, let's play it in 15 minutes. Um, and then, oh, let's make it completely better by having this deck building thing. Oh, it's so good. And I know that you kind of saw problems with that line of sight and stuff like that. But for me, I think it's made for those players that are just like, man, is it? Is it, I don't know if I'm going to hit it. It's like, no, we're going to simplify it. You're going to hit it. It's just look at symbols and then <clears> bam, done. And so I think I like that. And once you get in your mind that it's not going to be like a game like Memoir 44 where you're like, all right, I need to check the line of sight and right. do all that. Like, no, we're going to do these quack, quick bla- blazing battles, you know. And that's another thing is like I was trying to turtle one time and it was like, wait a second. No, you're yeah. not, you, you had to go out and be aggressive and grab these yeah. points and stuff like that. Turtling doesn't help you because they can keep taking shots at you and whittling you down. And yeah. Before you know it, you'll be pinned. You'll lose all your riflemen and they're the only ones that can actually get those objectives. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you, you have to be aggressive. It, it rewards aggressive play. Uh, I, I really, 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 super mega really like this game. Yeah. It is uh, hands down um, my favorite mm-hmm. of the year because uh, it's... It, well, you know, it's funny because you said that. You say, you say, well, you have issues with line of sight. And the fact of the matter is it's, it's I think, a lot of war gamers mm-hmm. going to this game thinking it's going to be a traditional war game, which includes line of sight and those sorts of things. But it's not a traditional war game. This is, I think this is a game that, that, that both war gamers can like and appreciate if they're willing to get past some of those things. And then it's also a game, you don't have to be a war gamer to like this game because the deck building is so interesting and, and the movement is so interesting. And I, I think this is one of those games that just marries both war gaming and traditional board gaming so well. And, and, and it's so much fun and so interesting. And I, I, I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. The art's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to have just more expansion because more just locations. Just, mm-hmm. there's, it's like open to expansions, but it doesn't necessarily need it. Yeah, it's just I just want more of well, it. Well, they're coming out. They're coming out with uh, Undaunted North Africa here. Oh, uh, I think I don't know when it's coming out. Next year, I assume. I'm gonna get that. Then. Yo, me <laughs> definitely for sure. Have you picked this one up yet? No, I, I still need to do that. Um, I need to. Because yeah. the problem is it's a two-player game, and I'm often by myself, yeah. so it's like yeah. I have to be careful of what I buy. Yeah, no, I hear you. But it's... it's. Uh, do, do you think your fiancé would like that one? Maybe. She might like the... Because she likes deck builders and stuff like that. Um, and if, she, if, it's, if it's quick enough, she won't mind the fact that we're going against each other. Yeah. Some people just don't like conflict, mm-hmm. you know, and that's fine. And that's fine. That, I mean, that's why we have cooperative games, right? Mm-hmm. But no, that's, that's cool. I... I uh, Man, I, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed, um, really enjoyed uh, this game quite a bit. And mm-hmm. like I say, I was excited when they did North Africa. I can't wait to see what they do with. Uh, I hope they do 
Italy. I hope they do Eastern Front. I hope they. I mean, I just. I hope they run with this game because I, I'm all in, baby. Mm-hmm. I think this is just a superb game. Yeah. Can't can't say enough good things about it. Um, it's a it's a small box, so easy to carry. Quick game, and the scenarios are literally under an hour. Um, I think I think I think the the most trouble you have is just separating the games at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then everything after that. Just, and that's not hard. And then after that, everything is just so smooth and plays so well. So. Yeah. All right. It looks like our joint number one. We agree is Undaunted Normandy from Osprey Games. Check it out. Well, all right. Uh, any final thoughts? Any games out there you're looking forward to next year, or or anything at all? Um, I don't know. There's um, a lot of games that I played with you. Um, where that's how I got a lot of my new games because I play a lot of just older games because right. those are usually the ones that are cheaper, right? Um, and stuff like that. But no, I'm excited. Um, always excited to see what Fantasy Flight has because they're one of my favorite producers just by the sheer fact of the quality of the components, components, and stuff like that. So. <clears throat> you know, I got to tell you, I I I've always historically been a huge Fantasy Flight games fan, and I still am. But I remember I used to always really look forward to their in-flight reports because mm. they just jam-packed with stuff I was interested in. And this last one, the only game I was interested in was the uh, was the Arkham Horror Final Hour. And even then, I wasn't super excited about it. But I was just kind of interested to see if it would play like Arkham in in an hour. Um, I just feel like they've shifted away from traditional board games there because they're they're doing all these Star Wars miniatures. They're mm-hmm. doing RPGs. They're doing uh, you know they got the new Marvel card game, which you know looks looks fine, but I'm not super excited about it. And so I just I wish they would produce more traditional board games. I wish they would do that, but I, I don't know. Maybe that's not where the money is, and I can't blame them for going where the money is. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah. But I uh, I I'd uh, I, I'd like to see more of those traditional games for that company because it is a great company. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, and we are looking forward to uh, North Africa Undaunted. So yes. we'll, hopefully that'll that's one that'll be on our radar. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. And uh, please uh, like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, check us out on Twitter, all that fun and interesting things. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever get uh, simply having a wonderful Christmas time stuck in your head, you just call us and we'll take care of wings for you. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going Let's see or remove all discs from that area, then remove all discs from two C areas adjacent. <laughs> 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 oh, we're always being. <laughs> Alright, so what about variants? Civil War. Select an opponent in civilization. It plays up to five other discs occupying any number of contiguous areas with barbarian discs. Because he loves you that much, <laughs> no, let's get those out of here. <laughs> no, yeah, let's get rid of those yeah, cards. <laughs> Dude, well, these cards are brutal, so those go cards are awesome. Yeah, they gotta come out sooner or later. <laughs>